Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr Manur Bangash welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing well the topic of this video is aquaporins so let's get started the pores are the integral cell membrane proteins or channel proteins that form an open tube in the cell membrane and permit selective movement of particles across the cell membrane example of pores in our body are aquaporins or the water channels aquaporins are pores or integral cell membrane proteins that allow rapid transport of water molecules to the cell membrane down the concentration gradient One important point to note here is that aquaporins are water channels they only allow passage of water molecules they are not ion channels they will not allow passage of any ion or molecule through it why are aquaporins needed here we know that water molecules can pass through small spaces that are present between the phospholipids of the lipid bilayer which are called interstices these small spaces but we also know that this middle part of the lipid bilayer is composed or it is made up of glycerol which is organic in nature and that makes this middle part of a lipid bilayer hydrophobic and because of this hydrophobic nature of this part of the lipid bilayer the transport of water molecules will be very slow and water molecules will basically like face a lot of hindrance while passing through this cell membrane so we need a more rapid way of transportation of water and that happens through special water channels which are called aquaporins or the water channels the structure of aquaporins uh, we know that this aquaporin is a pore and that pore is made up of intrinsic proteins and these proteins pass through the cell membrane so this let's say is that intrinsic protein this r glass shape protein which is your aquaporin which allows the passage of water through the lipid bilayer this diagram shows a more detailed structure of aquaporins it is the molecular structure or the microscopic structure of aquaporins So this diagram shows that aquaporins are composed of bundle of six trans membrane alpha helices alpha helices are the proteins that spans through the cell membrane and these proteins or alpha helices are embedded in the cell membrane okay so this is that alpha helis 1 2 3 Four, five, and six. So these are the six trans membrane alpha helices that spans through the cell membrane, which means that it is passing through the cell membrane. Okay, the structure of aquaporins consists of two different parts: the NPA motive and aromatic. arginine selectivity filter okay, so we know that we have here six alpha helices and between these helices we have five different regions this a to e are the five regions a b c d and e and these regions they loop into and out of the cell this is into and this is out of the cell membrane okay so this b and region e are hydrophobic in nature 
and these regions have group of amino acids three different groups of amino acids which is asparagine proline and alanine and this group of amino acids this pattern is collectively called NPA motif okay and this NPA motif it gives aquaporin an hourglass shape this is hourglass see this is the shape of an hourglass it's narrow sorry a narrow in the middle this is narrow in the middle and wider at ends and because of this hourglass shape aquaporins are selective in nature they only allow passage of selective molecules or more specifically the passage of water and the second part is the aromatic arginine selectivity filter this is a cluster of amino acids that enable aquaporin to selectively let through or block the passage of different molecules and these cluster of amino acids they help to bind water molecules and exclude other molecules that may be trying to enter through or pass through the pore and this aromatic arginine selectivity filter is made up of two amino acid groups from Hellas B and A and this is the tightest part of this channel and its narrowness that because it is the tightest and the most narrow part so this tightness weakens the hydrogen bonds between water molecules and they enable arginine which carry this arginine which carry a negative charge to interact with the water molecules and filter out the undesirable protons okay properties of aquaporins uh, the passage or transportation of water through these pores is through passive diffusion which means that no energy or ATP is utilized in the transportation of water through the across the cell membrane aquaporins they increases permeability of membrane to water which allows uh, these aquaporins they allow rapid transportation of water or passage of water through the cell membrane and water is transported in a single file plus these aquaporins are highly selective this last property of high selectivity is very important property of aquaporins and it will be discussed in detail later in this video okay, so how is water transported across the cell membrane through aquaporins now we know that aquaporins are made up of uh, transmembrane proteins the integral pro the intrinsic proteins that spans or passes through the cell membrane so the inner region of aquaporin consists of a narrow cavity and this cavity is lined by hydrophilic amino acids and these amino acids give this center of this cavity a positive charge which means that the center or this cavity of the aquaporins is positively charged now we'll see how this positive charge affects the transportation through the aquaporins okay, so let's say the concentration of water is high on this side and low on this side of the cell membrane okay water is transported through this aquaporin in a single file this is that single file single file means that each water molecule when enter or when passing through this channel is arranged in a straight line they're not haphazardly moving around when they're passing here through this protein so there are two different factors or 
let's say how this single file arrangement occurs is that firstly this this passageway is quite narrow so it will allow only single molecule to pass through it secondly when water molecules enter let's say this molecule will bump onto this one this will bump onto this molecule and so on and that is how these water molecules are transported through aquaporins in a single file here now comes the part that what makes these aquaporins selective we know that aquaporins are composed of different amino acids that is lining the inner structure of the uh, these integral proteins and one such amino acid is arginine and arginine carries a strong positive charge and due to that positive charge this inner side or this inner channel the passageway of aquaporins is positively charged and this charge basically filters out the unwanted molecules that are passing through the aquaporins or more specifically the proton ions they are very important it's a very important point that aquaporins does not allow protons to pass through the uh, across the cell membrane and it will only allow the passage of water and this selectivity of aquaporins or this property of not allowing protons to pass through aquaporins is very important because it maintains the proton gradient across the cell membrane and that maintenance of proton gradient is important for the production of ATP examples of aquaporins or the different areas or structures of the body containing aquaporins is salivary gland it's involved in secretion of saliva tear gland and it involves or it is involved in the tear secretion and in rbc's it uh, controls and regulate the volume and pressure of the red blood cells is there passing through the capillaries and fourth and most important is kidney aquaporins are found in the epithelial cells of the human kidney in the distal and collecting tubules they increase the uptake of water from tubules into the body cells so basically increasing the reabsorption of water into the body from the filtrate of kidney which is the urine clinical significance of aquaporins number 1 is devix disease which is also called neuromyelitis optica okay a uh, devix disease uh, it's an autoimmune disease in which there is a there's an autoimmune reaction against the aquaporin 4 and this autoimmune reaction against these aquaporins will affect spinal cord and the optic nerves which are the nerves of eyes second is the ne nephrogenic diabetes insipidus which is in which there is mutation of aquaporin 2 gene okay, normally aquaporin 2 gene regulates vasopressin or the adh hormone so under the regulation of aquaporin 2 gene this vasopressin or adh hormone it binds to the cell surface receptors and that binding will activate cyclic amp signaling pathway and this activation of cyclic amp signaling pathway will result in aquaporin containing vesicles to increase water uptake and return it to the circulation which means that 
it will this water uptake will basically increase water reabsorption by the body from the kidneys but in this nephrogenic diabetes in cepedus what happens is that mutation of aquaporin 2 genes occur and due to mutation of this gene the kidneys become kidneys cannot respond to the action of this hormone as a result your kidneys cannot concentrate the urine and as a result of that large amount of diluted urine will be excreted out and this condition of excretion of large amount of diluted urine uh, is called nephrogenic diabetes in cepedus in which your body becomes dehydrated because there's large amount of water loss in the urine third is severe or total aquaporin 1 deficiency in this condition these people are generally they're healthy but their kidneys cannot concentrate salute in the urine or conserve water in the body as a result large amount of urine diluted urine that contains large amount of water will be excreted out leaving body dehydrated so this was all about aquaporins please don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe my youtube channel thank you the and take care